it up. The skin, just like the kidney and the liver, also plays a vital role in maintaining osmosis regulation, removing waste products of metabolism from the body. That is in excretion, carrying out excretion, as well as um, homeostasis. That's regulating the internal body environment. Okay, making sure that our internal environment is maintained at a constant level. Now, the skin is also very important when it comes to feeling. In fact, it is the organ for sensitivity or feeling in mammals. It is made up of two layers. The first layer or the uppermost layer or the upper layer of the skin um, is what we call the epidermis. The epidermis. The, the epidermis is the upper layer of the mammalian skin. The epidermis consists of three layers, namely the stratum conion, stratum conion, Two, the granular cell layer, and three, the spinous cell layer. In other words, the granular cell layer is just called granular layer, and the spinous cell layer is also called the Malpighian layer. Malpighian layer. So let's look at the stratum conion. What does it look like? Well, the, the stratum conium is the area of the skin that, you, that covers our body. This is the area we refer to as the stratum conium. It's also called the conified layer. Conified, conified layer. One another name of the spinal cell layer is the Malpighian layer. What does the stratum, what is the structure of the stratum conium and its function? Number one, it consists of flat, circular cells, which are dead. Dead, flat, and circular cells. Now, these cells, as we said, since they are dead, in some areas, they are very tough. This is it. Your palm and the sole of your feet, you find out that the stratum conium are very, very tough, and they are thickened. What is the function of the stratum conium? The stratum conium performs the following functions. One, it protects the delicate organs and tissues in our body. Prevent the delicate, protect the delicate uh, tissues in the skin from mechanical injury, entry of bacteria, and then loss of excess water, which could lead to des desiccation. The next area here, or the next layer that makes up the epidermis of the skin is what we call the granular cell layer. The granular cell layer. Now, the granular cell layer consists of living cells. They are not dead. That means that the cells are not, I mean, unlike the, uh, the cells of the stratum conium, the cells here are alive. All right? Now, the function of the granular cell layer may be replacement of dead and worn out strontium conium, the cells of the strontium conium. The granular cell layer can or may replace them. The third layer here, and one of the most vital part of the epidemics, is the spinal cell layer, or what I can refer to as the Malpighian layer. Now, the Malpighian layer consists of actively dividing cells, that cells that just grow. I mean, you remember when we talk about meristematic cells under growth? So the cells of the spinal cell layer divide repeatedly. And because of that, they replace one out quantified tissues easily. They divide repeatedly to replace one out quantified tissues. Now, apart from that, they also contain some pigments. The spinal cell layer or the mapigan layer contains some pigments, namely keratin, 
and melanin. Now, keratin, a past question, determines or is responsible for the toughness and flexibility of the skin. Toughness and flexibility of the skin. Why melanin determines skin color? Now, you look at my complexion. Um, of course, this shows that there's a lot of pigmentation due to accumulation of melanin. Now, for those people who are dark complexion, well, the amount of melanin uh, may not be as much as what I have here, all right? So melanin determines skin color. You look at the albinos. I am not an albino, all right? I'm not an albino. But if you look at the skin of albinos, it looks, they, they look fairer than mine, all right? They look fairer than my hand because their own is due to uh, lack of characterization. For, for by the time we get to genetics, I'll tell you more about albinism and what causes uh, albinism. All right, but for melanin is important for skin coloration. And apart from that, melanin shields the skin. It protects the skin from ultraviolet radiations or ultraviolet rays of sunlight. Let's now move to another part of the skin, a part we call the true skin. That is the dermis. The second layer of the skin is the dermis. What are the components of the dermis? Dermis. Like I said earlier, the dermis is called through skin. Now, you can see from this part down to this area constitutes the dermis. So I want to look at the components part of the dermis. Number one, we start with the sebaceous gland the sebaceous gland. The sebaceous gland is a glandular structure. It produces a secretion we call sebum. Sebum. Now, sebum is an oily secretion which plays the following roles. One, it supplies the skin it makes the skin supple, supplies it with water, and lubricates the skin as well as the hairs. All right? And that's why you normally notice that even without applying some creams on your body, my dear friends, you have a shiny body. Your, your, your skin is glossy. All right? Your, your, your skin radiates some beauty because of the oily secretion produced by... Um, the sebaceous gland, which is sebum. Apart from the fact that sebum lubricates the hair and the skin and make them glossy, um, we can also say that sebum could be bactericidal, all right? Uh, the chemical could destroy gems or could be dangerous or harmful to gems. So these are the functions of sebum. Now, another part here that makes up the dermis of the skin is the erector pili muscle. The erector pili muscle. Erector pili muscle. Now, these ones actually uh, can contract, and yes, they can contract and relax, and that will help to regulate our body temperature, especially uh, by causing the hairs to rise up. Now, what happens is that during cold condition, the erector pili muscles or pillar muscles will actually um, can relax or contract. L listen, you see, we our body is covered with hairs. We are mammals, so during the cold condition, uh, there could be contraction of the erector muscles, and when it contracts, you find that the hairs, the hairs on our skin will rise up because of the contraction of the erector muscles. Hairs will rise up and trap a lot of air. Now, air is an insulator, which will prevent which will prevent further loss of it to the surrounding. And that's why we say that the erector pili muscle can help regulate body temperature. Although during hot condition, it will tend to relax. And when it relaxes, the hairs will fall on the surface of the skin. They tend to lie flat 
on the surface of the skin, thereby exposing the skin surface to the outside. And then that makes the mammal lose it even, I mean, easily to the outside. All right. Now, apart from erector pili muscle, we can go to the sweat gland. The sweat gland are continuously called glandular structures. They are tubular structures that are continuously coiled, as you can see from the diagram. This is the sweat gland. This is the sweat gland. Now, the sweat gland, um, after much coiling, forms a long tubular structure we call uh, the sweat duct. The sweat duct now opens to the outside through the sweat pore. Now, if you check your skin, your skin surface, you're bound to see some dots or some openings. Those represent or those are your uh, sweat pores. It is through them that sweat is given out to the surrounding. All right? Now, the function of the sweat gland. The sweat gland produces sweat. Sweat contains urine, I mean, sorry, urea and some salt. Now, if one, uh, by chance, or maybe accidentally, you taste your, your sweat, you notice that it is salty. It is because sweat contains salt and some uric acid as well as water. Now, the sweat gland also plays an important role in excretion because it removes, I mean, during sweating, it regulates our body temperature, while through removal of urea from our body as well as water and salt, it carries out excretion and then osmo regulation and homeostasis. All right, now we have nerves in the skin. The nerves themselves are very sensitive um, part of the skin. They enable man, uh, they enable the mammal to receive stimulation and react to his environment, especially what you call the stimuli. Now, there are different types of um, nerves or nerve cells in the skin. We have some that are sensitive to touch, call them um, mechanoreceptors. Some of them are sensitive uh, to chemicals. We call those ones the chemoreceptors. All right? And some are sensitive to cold and to heat or hot condition. And um, uh, those ones can also be referred to as the thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors. Remember your thermometer or temperature, thermoreceptors. So thermoreceptors are sensitive to cold and heat. We also have a particular area in the skin we call the passive uh, the passive corpuscle, uh, which is very uh, sensitive to pressure. Right now, let's look at another part or another section a tissue in the skin called the air follicle. The hair follicle is a depression or is a pit from where our hairs arise. Now, my dear friends, these hairs are dead. But from where they arise, we have some living cells. So they grow out from these living cells in the hair follicle and then outward. Now we have also in the skin collagen and elastic fibers. Those, these collagen fibers, they play some mechanical roles in our body. In the skin, they can play some supportive roles, okay? So that's why we say collagen and elastin fibers, all right? They play what you call um, some mechanical roles in our body. Um, there are also blood vessels in the skin, arteries. The arteries and the veins help to transport food, water, and oxygen to the skin for effective functioning. Now, beneath the skin is an area we call the fat adipose tissue. The fat adipose tissue. Fat adipose tissues. Yes. Now, the fat adipose tissue uh, consists of fatty deposits. All right. Um, what is the importance of this fatty deposit? Number one. I've told you, since they are fatty materials, they help to regulate our body temperature. They warm our body. They can also serve as stored uh, heat reserves to the body. Right? Now, another important part or a tissue in the skin is the, 
subcutaneous, sorry, I think I've talked about the subcutaneous fat deposits. Um, when we say subcutaneous, because of the, it means the deposits of fatty tissues. And then the adipose tissue means that that is where those materials are found. They are beneath the skin. But I think, I think we've talked about all follicle, the swear gland, erector, sebaceous gland, the basal cell layers. These ones are also located in the skin and they play um, the role. Anything that has to do with basal is like talking about the surface structure, uh, which plays a vital role in uh, reproduction. I mean, sorry, bringing up some, bringing about some developmental changes. From what we've discussed today, we, we have seen that excretion is one vital uh, process by which mammals can regulate their internal environment. And like I've always said, by constant reading and revision, especially constant practicing, my dear, you'll be able to overcome your fears. Until next time, when I come your way, it is goodbye. Where is it top?